Hello, everyone. Let's welcome our next speaker in Security Dev, Dev Room on FOSDEM. Uh, it's Lukáš Vrabec and his talk about Linux with container and times. So let's welcome Lukáš. So can you hear me fine? Okay, before we start with the presentation, uh, I have one question for you. How many of you know SC Linux? So many people. Okay, that's, that's great. So uh, let's start with the introduction. My name is Lukáš Vrabec. Uh, I'm SC Linux evangelist at Red Hat. Some, call, some people already call me that. Uh, I'm a member of security technologies team at Red Hat, and I'm RHEL and Fedora contributor to following packages, which is SC Linux policy, XGuest, Udica, and uh, NetLabel tools. Uh, here, are my, uh, here is my blog post. If you are interested in some, in, uh, in some CVEs and how SC Linux mitigate them, you can find some interesting blog posts and GitHub link and also Twitter. So why we are here? Uh, I'll use a nice example of one of my colleagues from uh, last week. And uh, in one uh, OpenShift cluster, the SC Linux is enforced by default. Uh, on this cluster, there are almost 200 pods running more than 600 containers and 100 and, uh, 134 containers run as privilege. In this case, I mean there is no S Linux is isolation for them, and 134 is so many containers, right? So privileged containers are really scary. And today, I would like to teach you how you can generate a Linux policy for every container. So quick introduction to SC Linux. Uh, I make you SC Linux experts in less than five minutes, hopefully. So SC Linux, you probably know it, is uh, implementation of uh, mandatory access control. But we can say it's a process isolation uh, technology for mitigate processes, uh, for to mitigate attacks uh, via privilege escalation. Uh, one of the most important things you need to know uh, are labels, right? Uh, in this case, there are two examples, container underscore T and container file underscore T. These labels are assigned to processes or to system resources. A system resource could be directory, file, symlink, socket, and many more. And these, uh, these uh, labels are assigned to, uh, to processes and system resources by SL Linux security policy. So how labels look like in reality? For, they are stored related to sy uh, system resources. They are stored in extended attributes of the file system. For example, x2, x3, and x4. There are two ways how you can see the SC Linux label of some uh, specific file. In this case, it's slash etsy slash password. And as you can see, uh, the, the whole SC Linux label is, uh, what is what is written in red. But in this case, we are interested only about the type, which is the third uh, part of the label, which is password underscore file underscore T. So for, for processes, uh, we can use a parameter capital Z for PS command. And if you want to grab uh, some label of container, you, you can see that in the example there are three containers, and each container has the uh, same SC Linux, SC Linux type, which is container underscore T, which is here. Uh, SC Linux security policy describes the interaction between the processes and uh, system resources, right? And uh, we are using for the interaction uh, allow rules, and this is the example of the, of the allow rule. The first is keyword allow, that's quite clear. The second thing saying that any process labeled as container underscore T can read, open, and get attribute of files labeled as container underscore file underscore T. And the impo what is important to say also that Everything, uh, everything is denied by default, so you need to have explicitly allow uh, rule inside the SC Linux policy, which is loaded to kernel to allow some to allow some Cisco. And basically, that's it. You are now SC Linux experts, and that's all you need to know for generating SC Linux policies for containers, of course. 
Okay, so now we will talk about the generic S Linux policy. Uh, for, for each container without some custom S Linux policy, we use the default one, which is container underscore T. This policy protects the host system uh, from, the container, from the container processes and uh, processes or containers in, uh, with this SLinux policy can only uh, read or execute uh, files in slash user and these container processes can only read to, uh, uh, sorry, only write to container files. Uh, as I show you, process type, that's quite simple, that's container with container underscore T as a Linux label, and file is every file and directory on the, on, the, on the host file system labeled as container underscore file underscore T. So uh, this, is, this is really, really nice slide. Uh, I really like it. They, these are the list, uh, just few of them, few of CVEs of uh, container runtimes when there was a possibility that a process inside the container could could escape from container to the host file system and in several cases gets root access. Uh, Selenux blocked all of them. Uh, the latest one is from February 2019 when Selenux completely blocked this type of attack. Yep, I say that. Okay, so what about containers attacking each other? For this, uh, we have also solution and it's multi-category security which is part of multi-level security. So this is the way how it works with MCS. Uh, we have two containers. Uh, both of them uh, has uh, same as Linux label, which is container underscore T, but the categories are different. First one has category C1 and C2. Second one, category C2 and C3. In the middle, there are three, three files with same as Linux, Linux type, which is container underscore file underscore underscore. T, and as we can see, following container can access this file because C2 and uh, C1 and C2 is subset of C1 and C2. What is interesting that a file in the middle uh, doesn't have any category, and empty set is also subset of C1 and C2, and same situation for C2 and C3. So this is way how uh, we are isolating containers between each other. This is the, this is the uh, same, same slide, but arrows showing what is not allowed. So uh, uh, C1 and C2 is not subset of C2 and C3. So uh, you can ask how you can label some, uh, some directory as container underscore file underscore T. Uh, container, container runtimes uh, has a really nice feature, it's for sure uh, supported in Podman and uh, I'm pretty sure that it also in Docker that if you if you starting some specific container uh, you can buy mount for example in in the example slash var slash lib slash maria db and you put parameter capital Z so container runtime engine will relabel on the host system uh, this directory to container underscore file underscore t also with the with the same categories like running container uh, has. That's because of the capital Z here. If you want to have two containers and you want to share the same directory, you can put uh, small z, which means the, run uh, the, the engine just relabel, uh, relabel this directory as container underscore file underscore t with no specific categories. So, of course, uh, this solution has several problems. The first one is that one generic default as Linux policy for containers is too strict for, for, for cert, certain cases. For example, Fedora Silverboot project needs container to read and write uh, user home directories. Second one, Project FluentD needs to able to read logs stored in slash log slash var on the host system. There is another case when default as Linux policy is too loose in certain cases. There is no SLinux network controls, which means that container can bind on any port. And there is no SLinux container, uh, there is no SLinux control for capabilities, which means that a running container uh, has uh, all Linux capabilities. So we are able also to solve this. So 
What's the current situation? What can you do uh, with, uh, with MCS and generic guest Linux policy? Let's say we want to start a container with FluentD project and we want to buy out slash var slash log um, from, from the host system and we use capital Z as a parameter. It's uh, oh, here, okay? And uh, this is not good. Actually, it's pretty bad because all other confined uh, services on the host system will not be able to write or read slash var slash log because the label will be container underscore file underscore t instead of var underscore log underscore t, which is the default label for this path. Uh, the worst situation, what you can do, you can use this ugly parameter, which is here, and basically you disable SLinux separation for that container. So this is the worst what you can do. So solutions. You can write completely new SLinux policy for your custom container, but this is the best solution, but it's really too difficult, right, for system administrator because you need to have, let's be honest, quite good SLinux expertise. The second thing what you can do is to add additional SLinux rule for the container underscore T type. This is totally ideal because you need to know uh, how to write SLinux policy and also these additional rules will apply for all containers on your system, not uh, to just your uh, custom container. So to solve all these issues, uh, there is a Udica project. Actually, Udica means a fishing route in, in Slovak. And Udica is a tool for generating SLinux security profiles or policies for containers. So the best way uh, how, to, how to describe Udica, uh, let's, use, let's use for a big example. Let's start a container uh, mounting slash home with permissions read and write. Uh, let's mount slash var slash spool with read only permissions and let's expose, expose port uh, 20. 21. So, as I told you, generic SLinux policy cannot read and write slash home. SLin uh, generic SLinux policy cannot read slash var slash spool for containers, but on the other hand, can expose all ports. So, I'm brave, brave enough to show you live demo, but let's, let's uh, finish the slides and, and then I show you the demo. But what will be there is we start the container with the, with the buy mounts and ports as I described. Then we only uh, run inspection of the latest uh, started container, which is here. And Udica will generate SLinux policy based on the inspection of container with name my underscore container. Udica uh, suggests or recommends to load following SLinux policies, which is this load command. We just restart, uh, we just restart the, the container uh, with, the, with the following parameter where we are basically saying to uh, not to use generic SLinux policy container underscore T, but our, which is my con underscore container dot process, and that's it. Uh, then just, just to prove it, when we run PS, we will see that our container is running uh, with, the, with, with our new SLinux label. So how it looks like, what's, what's, what's under the hood? So the whole concept here is based on the block inheritance feature in uh, SIL language, where Udica creates or combining rules from uh, predefined SIL blocks, or we can say templates. So Udica inspects, inspects container and looking for mounts, ports, and capabilities. And combines these predefined blocks with the with the with the base one, which is base underscore container underscore uh, sorry dot seal. So this is the way we will use the base uh, block, which is needed for uh, reading and executing files in slash user and reading uh, configuration files in slash at c. Then we will use a net block, uh, which we need for binding on. Uh, for binding on TCP port 21, which is labeled as FTP underscore port. And next block is home, which we need for reading and writing uh, to user home directories. Ujisa basically inherits uh, allow rules inside these blocks and generate new SLinux policy with the name my container. 
We also mount uh, slash var slash spool, right, inside the container, but for this there is no predefined block. So what Udica can do is to look to directory slash var slash spool, find all possible SLinux labels, which could be inside this directory, generate, generate uh, block, in this case let's call it spool, and again inherit all these allow rules to our SLinux policy. And that's it. Uh, this kind of generated SLinux policy you can use with for following runtimes, which is Podman, Docker, Buildach, and also Kubernetes. So these are the these are the slides. Slides. So let's let's try it with demo. Okay. So I installed. Can can you see it? Good. Perfect. So I install all necessary packages, which is Udica, Podman, and Settles. I tell you what is Settles uh, in a moment. So let's check what's the SLinux status on, on this system. Hopefully it's, it's enforcing. Okay, cool. So we have SLinux in enforcing. Let's start, uh, let's start the container from the example. So we are uh, mounting slash home, slash var spool, and exposing port 21. Okay, container is started. Uh, and we, we see that SLinux label of the, con of the container is container underscore T. So, sorry, it's here. And here are the random, randomly, generated, uh, randomly generated containers. Now you see command SC search. Basically, I'm querying the allow rules inside the SLinux policy loaded in, uh, in, into kernel if there, is, if there is a present allow rule. The first one is related to slash home. Slash home has a Linux label home underscore root underscore t. And if there is no there is no output, which means there is no allow rule. The same situation with the var spool. Uh, that's pretty clear. Uh, the pod has a Linux label var underscore spool underscore t. T. There is no there is no allow rule. But on the other hand, uh, for the ports, we can see that container. Uh, which is part of these attributes can basically uh, buy mount on, uh, sorry, uh, bind on uh, any TCP, any TCP uh, ports. Another, uh, let's 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 continue. Now we uh, run Udica, so uh, we need we need the inspection file of the of the latest container, put it to standard input of Udica, and the parameter is the name of the of the new S Linux policy. So let's start it. Uh, policy uh, is created, and Udica recommends to load following uh, following uh, templates and final S Linux policy for our container using command sc module. So let's do that. And we stop the latest container. Perfect, and we start container again, uh, but with following uh, following parameter, which is uh, which saying to start a co container with the with the following S Linux label. And as we can see, it's not running as container underscore t, but it's uh, our custom S Linux type, and we are running again uh, to SC search. And as we can see, the allow rules are now there, right? So this uh, this container can. Uh, can read and write uh, directories under slash home, can access to uh, slash var slash spool, and bind, again, on the other hand, can bind only on uh, po uh, uh, port label FTP underscore port underscore T, which is, uh, which is a Linux label port, TCP port uh, 21. And basically, that's it. So now you are able to generate a Linux policy really quickly. So uh, here are the links uh, for Rudica, for Podman, if you are interested uh, uh, how it looks like the, the inheritance in, in, um, in Udica, you can look on, uh, on Udica POC and you have the links. So that's it, thank you, and if you have any questions, I'm ready. Thank you.
thanks for your talk. Uh, now, as a new uh, SE Linux expert, I was wondering uh, why this UDITSA part, could this be in principle also part of Podman? I mean, you're basically already passing all the information to Podman, the port, the read, uh, read write and read only stuff. Yes, uh, it's it's good point. Actually, uh, I discussed it with uh, Podman Podman maintainers to include it there, but uh, somehow, unfortunately for me, we agree that Duditsa will be separate too. But we discussed that. Mm. I have a question about uh, labeling. So you said that Podman is relabeling all the files in the container on container start. N not really. Uh, SLinux is not enabled inside the container, right? So the Podman is enabling this stuff uh, on, on the host level, so which means in, in, in the host, right? So there is no SLinux, there is no SLinux uh, inside of, the container. Sorry? There is a lot of file operation. Yes. Okay, so for if container is like large, has a lot of files, it's it would be kind of slow, yeah? Yes, yes, we know about this issue. Uh, we discussed it uh, recently inside the uh, SLinux team and most probably we will work uh, on, on this for future to kind of to make the relabeling faster. Thanks. Maybe there are, there are ways how to do that. So some other questions? I didn't see there was someone oh, in the back. Uh, do you have some plan to integrate it into Kubernetes? Because right now you're writing Podman, then write Udisa, and then run Podman again. If I'm writing a Kubernetes or any other orchestration manifest, yes. uh, I'm doing it once. So how well it works with Kubernetes, Mesos, and whatever else there is on the market? Uh, very good question. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, in near future, there will be on, on GitHub. There are already uh, there should be already uh, there should be container with uh, Udica inside there, and basically you can almost fully automatically way, uh, generate a Linux policy inside the Kubernetes. We put uh, we put annotation generate a Linux policy to uh, to Docker file, right? So. Uh, there is a, there is an operator. It recognized that some container was started with that annotation. The SLinux policy is SLinux policy is generated. However, there are still technical issues. Uh, for example, how to uh, how to maintain uh, SLinux policy between the cluster and stuff like that. So it's not easy, but we are working on that. And some proof of concept you can already find on on Udica, uh, web page. Uh, so maybe a follow-up to the other question. So is there a, is the, I mean, it takes a while for Udica to, to generate the policy, but if the policy is really large, is there also a performance hit on every container start due to as a Linux having to, to do that, or is that really fast? And or can you maybe show what the the CI, CIL was what that Udica generated earlier in the, yeah, the yeah, thing I just can, to demonstrate? I, yep, I can do that. Uh, actually, this is, this is pretty fast. Uh, this, this is the SLinux policy. Uh, what you can see, the first one is that the blog is called my underscore container. You see that, uh, you can see the second and third line saying that inherit all allow rules from the, these, uh, free, uh, these blogs, which is container, restricted underscore net container. Uh, the next line is related to capabilities. So this is, this is quite quickly and uh, all the rest of the allow rules are related only to slash var slash pool because there is no predefined, uh, there is no predefined template. Uh, actually, this is, this, is not, this is not a problem. We can, we can generate a Linux policy really quickly uh, because it's just uh, parsing the inspection file which is in JSON format and looking if there is predefined, if there is a predefined block, uh, then uh, just set the list of capabilities from inspection file and if there, if there is a need, generate also allow rules. But the main issue is related to, uh, to relabeling. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your talk. We are, we've got last half a minute, so we will probably end, uh, end this talk. Thank you, Lukáš, for the uh, presentation. Thank you.